a king of glory who doesn't speak. And might. So get your Bibles ready. Get it ready. Get your pens. Those who don't write anymore in key or type or whatever you call it, get it ready. Hallelujah. Now let's give our hands, put our hands together to the king of glory. And then after that, I will tell you something. Yes, yes, brother God. <laughs> Brethren of the cross, members of this glorious kingdom, children of this king of glory, I am excited, I am happy, I am animated. <laughs> to introduce to you the great man of God, Reverend George Mike Porter. Let's give it all to Jesus Christ. Let's give it all to Jesus Christ. For in Him we live and move and have our being. Without Him we are nothing. It is by His grace that every one of us continue to serve in the kingdom. Lift up your voice unto the Lord and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We will lift our hands for what we pray. Great God, we thank you. We bow our knee before you. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the Lord of the universe, the Master of the universe, the King of Kings, the one who called us, who formed us in our mother's womb, and called us when we were nowhere, and brought us into the kingdom of light. We thank you, O oh God, for this great season that we have had celebrating the King of Glory. We are asking that this morning as we crown this event, your presence will continue with us and there will be an impartation of your awesome power into our lives. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord for the lives of every one of you, for your dedication, your a tireless commitment to the work of the Lord, the demonstration of love that you have for Jesus. Paul would always acknowledge the love that the, the churches that he formed, the love that they had for Christ. He would always say, when I heard of your love and when I heard of your, your commitment, I do not cease to give thanks to God, the Father of glory for your lives. Hallelujah. We want to thank God for your lives that in spite of the stormy weather, you have been able to uh, brave all challenges and you are here in the presence of the Lord. We thank God for gallant soldiers, men of God, our district executives, um, our presiding elders and the elders in general, for all of your commitment to the work of the Lord in the district and for the great work that God has used all of us over the course of of 2013, not forgetting our able deaconesses and our deacons and our officers, our instrumentalists, ushers, and various people taking on different roles to ensure that the kingdom of heaven marches forward as one mighty army. Hallelujah. And God says, I am building my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is building his church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. This morning, uh, I want to speak to you briefly on the subject, Arise and shine for your light has come. Hallelujah. In other words, I'm talking to you on the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Before I go in, do we have any uh, loved one visiting us for the first time? Uh, and then the first time our own decay in this right. You are very important to us. You are special to us. We want to know you. Can you wave at us? Who, who is somebody visiting us for the first time? Our brother from Canada. They are the only people visiting for the first time. All right, let's put our hands together for them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. Turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah chapter 60, if you will, please. Isaiah chapter 60. I believe we are all comfortable with the English language and so just move forward in the interest of time. And I want to read from verse 1 
2 verse 3. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They gather together. They come to you, your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. I verse 5 Then you shall see and become radiant and your heart shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned unto you. Not only that, the wealth of the Gentiles will come unto you. Hallelujah. Somebody say a big amen. amen. And now let's also read from the book of Haggai. Haggai chapter 1. And anybody who opens to Haggai will read chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. Hagar is a minor prophet. Anybody you guys that can read for us? Hagar chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. I'm reading the New King James Version. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, why every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land, and the mountains on the grain, and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. Amen. People of God, over the course of the week, we have been blessed in the course of fasting and praying, and we've received the messages, the word of God, from various uh, our speakers, our elders, our area head, and we have learned a lot. Time will fail for me to go through the details of what we have studied and learned over the week. Who has learned something this week about the King of Glory? Did you learn something this week? If you did, shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Who is this King of Glory? Who is this king of glory? With all that we have learned this morning over the course of the time, I'm just going to declare some things into your life and then we will take our special offering for today. Praise the Lord. This is the day of impartation. Hallelujah. It is the day of impartation. We've talked a lot about the glory of God. We've said that the glory of God is the power of God. The glory of God is a tangible manifestation of his presence and of his anointing. The glory of God sometimes is reflected physically as a bright shining light in most instances in scripture when the glory of God was manifested we hear of a, a very bright light Bible says that Saul was traveling to a certain city to persecute the Christians and when Jesus appeared the light of his countenance and his glory was so bright that Saul fell to the ground and Saul was blinded Moses went to the mountain top and on the mountain top he experienced the glory of God. And when he came back, Bible says that his face was brightened and so much that the people could not behold his face. We read about the, in the book of Acts about Peter when the angel appeared over there quickly the place was, was lighted up. In fact, I read about a certain church service that in that service, the glory of God descended so much that there was smoke. Another evidence of the glory is smoke. It may not manifest physically, but it could possibly manifest physically. And in this particular church, it manifested physically. And some of the people thought that there was fire in the place. And they called the fire department. When the fire department came, there was no fire over there. And everybody concluded that yes, this is the glory of the living God. You may not see it with your eyes, but I came to tell you that the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I said the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I'm going to tell you a couple of things about what the glory does or the evidence, the blessings that we experience in the glory. This morning, God is looking for somebody who will rise up and begin to shine. Shine at the workplace. Shine 
in the office, shine on campus, shine everywhere you go because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You see, that passage said, 